Hi, welcome to Bookie. To unlock more world-class bestseller, please download our app. Just search for B-O-O-K-E-Y at Apple Store or Google Play. You will get 7 days free trail with more features. Today we will unlock the book The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. Immortality is a topic that conjures up images of beauty and imagination, which has been talked about since ancient times. For example, it said in the Bible, I'm the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Over the past thousand years, instances of people who become immortal from believing in religion have never been found, but this hasn't affected people's pursuit of immortality. Therefore, in modern society, many people hope to achieve immortality by turning to advanced science and technology. In 1967, scientists were commissioned to freeze the body of an American physicist James Bedford using cryogenic technology. In July 2015, the body of John Wenlian, a common voluntary worker in Shandong, China underwent the same treatment. By doing these, scientists hope to continue studying the resurrection of the human body, so that when the technology become available in the near future, they could possibly thaw and resurrect these bodies. Is the belief in immortality a scientific fantasy or a reality? The book The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks will tell you the answer to this question. This book not only tells the story of the immortal Celsi La and the owner Henrietta Lacks, but also shows the history of human medical progress. It presents people's discussions on medical ethics, the ownership of bodily tissues, and the right to informed consent over the last century. The author of the book is Rebecca Sklut, a well-known scientific writer in the United States. She has been curious about Henrietta and her cells since she was 16 years old, and began studying and investigating the story of Hee Law many years later. After 10 years of exploration, the author not only discovered the secret of Hee Law's immortality and the story behind the cells, but also learned about the moral and ethical challenges that scientists faced when using he law cells in their research. The author finally finished this 320,000-word documentary work of literature and published it. She wanted to help people understand the immortal life of Henrietta Lacks, and hoped to draw their attention to the value of life, individual dignity, and medical ethics. Next, I will tell you the story of he law in three parts. Part 1, The Previous and Present Life of Hila Part 2, Hila's Great Contributions Part 3, Problems Caused by Hila Let's start with the first part, The Previous and Present Life of Hila. For those who are uninitiated, let us first introduce what Hila is. Hila is the cell of Henrietta Lacks who was a black American woman. As such, the story should begin with Henrietta Lacks herself. Henrietta Lacks was born in a shanty in Roanoke, Virginia in the United States on August 1, 1920. Her mother passed away four years later. Her father sent her to their old home in Clover, Virginia, where she lived with her grandfather Tommy Lacks and cousin David Lacks. Henrietta and David got up at four o'clock every morning to feed the livestock and look after the orchard. They then went to the tobacco field with other relatives to plant or harvest tobacco. They spent almost their entire childhood like this. Henrietta at the age of 20 and David at the age of 25, held their wedding ceremony at a priest house on April 10, 1941. David began to work in a steel mill near the Turner Station at the end of the same year. Henrietta also moved to the Turner Station a few months later and started a new life. She cooked meals for David and their children during the day, and often danced with her best friend Sadie in the bar at night, or played bingo at home. Sadie said, Henny made life come alive. Being with her was like being with fun. Henny just loved peoples. She was a person that could really make the good things come out of you. However, good times always pass quickly. On January 29, 1951, Henrietta went to the Hopkins Hospital for a physical examination, and a vicious case of cervical cancer was discovered. 
She received radiation treatment at this hospital on February 6, which was the most common therapeutic method for cervical cancer at all hospitals in the United States at that time. After the procedure, Dr. Wharton wrote in the report, the patient tolerated the procedure well and left the operating room in good condition. Before that however, Dr. Wharton excised two coin-sized tissue sections from Henrietta's cervix. The cervical tissue sections were quietly handed over to the doctor's assistant without Henrietta's knowledge or consent. After that, Henrietta seemed to regain her health for a short time, but the cancer cells spread again very quickly. On August 8, Henrietta who had just had her 31st birthday was hospitalized due to intolerable pain. A month later, her body was completely infested with tumors, and her abdomen bulged like she was pregnant. On October 3, Henrietta begged her good friend in tears, Please let David take care of my children after I die, especially my baby girl Deborah. Her life ended at 12.15, October 4. Henrietta Lacks died, but her cervical tissue cells were sent to George Gay's laboratory without her or her family's knowledge. The name of the cells was changed from Henrietta Lacks to Hila. Why was it called this? It's mentioned in the book that Mary Kubitschek, Gay's lab assistant had a unique habit of labeling cells. She chose the first two letters of the patient's first and last name, and combined them together as the name of the cell. So she labeled the cervical cancer cells as he la when she saw the owner's name was Henrietta Lacks. Two days after Mary cultured the he la cells, Gay revealed to some close colleagues, my lab might have grown the first immortal human cells. How did he do it? First, a good culture media was required for culturing cells. After many years of research, the gay couple developed a relatively perfect formula, the plasma of chickens, juice boiled from bovine embryo, special salt, and blood from human umbilical cords. Such a culture media could provide sufficient nutrition for cell survival. Second, the cells being cultured must be protected from contamination. Being skilled in handiwork since childhood, Gabe built four airtight rooms by himself. His wife Margaret was a surgical nurse, so she taught the aseptic techniques to all the laboratory personnel. Finally, excellent laboratory skills were also necessary in culturing cells. Gay's assistant Mary who graduated in physiology had a pair of dexterous and powerful hands, and she could perform precise cutting, grinding, tweezing, and pipetting for a long period of time. Henrietta's cervical tissue was directly processed by Mary. She worked with the tissue following Margaret's sterile procedure, cutting it into one millimeter squares. She finally put these into flasks containing gaze culture media. Generally, cells can divide about 50 times before they die, but Gay observed that ELA cells continued to divide after that and grew with a doubling time of about 24 hours. Upon this discovery, Gay and his team realized that a form of immortal human cells had been created. We often encounter characters in novels or movies who can live forever and never die, such as the Struldbrug in Gulliver's Travels, and Dr. Manhattan in Watchmen. These people were not born to be immortal, but became so after genetic mutation. So what about he lost cells? Is their immortality also the result of mutation like these people in fictional works? Each chromosome in cells contains a DNA region called telomere at its end, which has a certain length. Every time a cell divides, the telomeres are shortened. And when the telomeres become too short, the cell will stop growing or die. But cancer cells contain an enzyme called telomerase, which can constantly repair the telomeres. To be specific, the telomerase adds telomeres back to the chromosomes after each cell division. In this way, the telomeres will never run out, and the cell will never age or die. Dr. Gay had been culturing cancer cells in test tubes or in vitro for 30 years before he got his hands on Hila. But for a long time the cancer cells he cultured would die in a few days. Hence, we can see that the secret of Hila cells' immortality is not so simple as having the telomerase enzyme that most cancerous cells do. The secret turned out to be that he lost cells were infected with human papillomavirus 18 or HPV 18, which is very dangerous. 
the virus can turn off some genes that can prevent tumor growth, and as a result, HeLa cells has an extremely strong vitality. These cells can still grow vigorously even after leaving the human body. As such, with the HPV-18 triggered genetic mutations, along with the assistance of telomerase, the immortal HeLa cells were born. This scientifically explains the immortality of HeLa cells. But Henrietta's daughter Deborah had a different opinion. In 2001, Deborah eventually saw her mother's HeLa cells in a lab, which fulfilled her decade-long wish. She couldn't help praising them with great pleasure and surprise. She thought of her mother who loved her so much and the God she believed in. In Deborah's view, all these HeLa cells were her mother, and as messengers chosen by God, they would certainly be immortal. We have now covered the first part, the previous and present life of HeLa. Henrietta Lacks died from cancer, but her cancer cells were secretly cultured by scientists in a lab. The result was the birth of an immortal cell line, HeLa cells, that could divide indefinitely. Today we are just sharing limited bookie. To unlock more key insights of world-class bestseller, please download our app. Just search for B-O-O-K-E-Y at Apple Store or Google Play. You will get 7 days free trail with more features.